here's a way to cut your tremors and your slow walking and your cramping and all of the problems that this disorder can have in half. And that can be done in weeks to months. And it's done simply by changing what you eat. This study looked at plant diets reported in the prestigious journal Neurology. The plant diet helped after only one week. Both tyrosine and levodopa were more effectively absorbed and transported into the brain to increase dopamine production. They did need to reduce the drug levodopa, cinnamon in the study, uh, because the, there was less needed. And as you may know, if you get excesses of levodopa as a drug, then that can cause side effects such as dyskinesia, which are, are kind of erratic rapid movements that are not too controllable. So this, if you do start eating less protein, you may wanna work with your neurologist and you know, let them know that you may be needing less frequency of dopa, levodopa and perhaps less dosage of levodopa and see if you can get the go ahead to adjust that. Well, fluctuations in symptoms in this were less too. Fluctuations are, uh, for people who aren't familiar with this, uh, if you take your medication, say in the morning, and then uh, a couple hours after breakfast, the medication starts wearing off before you take the next one and you're experiencing symptoms again. This is called a fluctuation or an off time. And the fluctuations were reduced with this plant-based diet. One of the reasons why that was reduced is because of fiber. The plant fiber slows the absorption of the amino acid tyrosine and the drug levodopa so that it's gradually put into the bloodstream, gradually put into the brain, and you make dopamine over a longer period of time. And this smooths out the fluctuations. Not only does more fiber help, and fiber is only found in plants and it's most abundant in whole plant foods. Uh, this picture of broccoli here is an example, or is that parsley? Anyway, some leafy green, they all have fiber. Uh, so stable con concentrations of levodopa and tyrosine are what you want, and to lower fluctuations in tremors and rigidity. Now, one problem that many people have with Parkinson's, especially as it goes on, is constipation. And fiber helps tremendously with constipation too. So this is another of the real benefits of a plant-based diet for Parkinson's disease, especially a whole food plant diet. Here's an interesting study was done in Brazil. They cut out red meat, which is very big in Brazil, and they added vitamin B2, riboflavin. Motor skills improved 50% in the first three months and then up to 60% in six months. That's a tremendous improvement, isn't it? They did use uh, some vitamin B2, not a huge dose, a reasonable amount. On uh, riboflavin recharges glutathione peroxidase, slowing damage to dopaminer dopamine producing neurons. The word dopaminergic means dopamine producing. But this is for long-term reduction of risk of progression, whereas the cutting out the red meat is what made the big difference in the improvement in motor skills. <clears throat> Red meat can kill neurons through oxidation and glycation. And I'll talk more about this as we go on. When you fry or broil or barbecue meat or chicken or fish, and you produce damaging advanced glycation end products. These are also found in aged cheese. Also, you find oxidized cholesterol. Oxidized cholesterol is also found in red meat and pork and chicken and fish. And oxidized cholesterol is found too in cheese and oxidized proteins too. They did find when looking at people with Parkinson's disease that these advanced glycation end products, AGE here, were higher, one and a half times higher in Parkinson's disease. And this is not a good idea because this creates inflammation and oxidative destruction of dopamine producing cells. The most dangerous were processed meats like sausages, cured meats, chicken meat, and pork or beef patties. Pretty much covers the, the levels here. Uh, this is based on 
two 2020 studies. Um, one is foods with potential pro-oxidant and antioxidant effects involved in Parkinson's disease, excellent. And another one is advanced glycation end products and carb protein carbonyl levels in plasma reveal sex-specific differences in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. I've studied and worked with and done clinical trial with Alzheimer's disease, and we did limit the advanced glycation end products to uh, get improvement in that problem. So which diet is gonna be perfect for Parkinson's disease? Uh, I recommend my wife's cookbook, Parkinson's disease cookbook. By the way, both of these books are available on my website, drsteveblake.com for under $10 to make them available to you in ebook format. So I don't want price to be a problem for anyone. If you can't afford the $10, email me and I'll make sure you get a copy. I'm here to help you and to serve you. People in the later stages of Parkinson's disease often become too thin. Now, part of this is a tremendous amount of calories burned because of tense muscles. And tremors burn a lot of calories too. Uh, so people tend to be too thin and a hearty diet is needed when people are needing this many calories. So for instance, uh, we worked with a man called Gus and he was, his wife was feeding him bacon and eggs and hash browns for breakfast to bulk him up to, because he was too thin. And she was doing the best she knew for him. And we suggested that he change his diet and become more plant-based. Well, a month later, we saw him again and we asked him if he changed his diet. Well, he only changed breakfast. He switched that breakfast over to oatmeal with avocados and berries and uh, and I think put almond milk in there too. So he was having a good, delicious breakfast that had a lot of calories and helped bulk him up, but it didn't have the protein levels or a lot of the contaminants that I'll talk about later. And so we asked his wife, how is he doing? And she said, well, he's improved about 25% both in movement and in thinking clarity. We said, how long did it take you know, with a change of diet before he noticed anything. She said, well, it wasn't until the next day. What do you think of that? That's quick results. Usually it takes up to a week, but he, he was obviously encountering huge problems with all that protein at breakfast, making his medication hardly work at all. I, I've heard many people say things like, well, I had a steak at dinner and my medication didn't work at all. You may have experienced something like that yourself. So limiting protein intake to the RDA, 46 grams a day. And that's from all sources, not just animal products, but the amount of protein in grains and beans and nuts needs to be accounted for too. Uh, it's a safe and effective strategy. And you can provide plenty of calories on a diet like this, but without the excess protein. And this, this is how I can help you. Your neurologist is, probably doesn't have time to explain this to you and your neurologist probably hasn't studied food as much as I have. Will people change their diet? I work with people with various problems. People are at high risk for heart disease. If you suggest that they change your diet, they often don't change it because they're not getting any symptoms until the heart attack kills them. But with Parkinson's disease and with arthritis, when people change their diet, they notice life-changing differences. So Parkinson's patients can experience almost immediate relief and within a week or a month from their motor symptoms and thinking difficulties. This makes dietary changes more acceptable. We worked with a wonderful man uh, who was in his late seventies when we met him and he'd had Parkinson's disease for 35 years. And he was a professor and loved to putter around in his carpentry shop, but hadn't been able to even go into his carpentry shop for 10 years because of his movement difficulties. And his wife reported, we plan to continue the diet and it has been helpful to discover that it's not as hard to do as we anticipated. There's nothing like good results to keep us motivated. Made us feel really good that he was doing better. He was back in his carpentry shop doing little projects and tinkering around. His hands were calm enough to do that. <laughs> this guy was on medications every hour of the day, several different ones. Mm -hmm.